is Cinnamon Coney, your art Sherpa, and I want to welcome you back to Southwest Art Week. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this Georgia O'Keeffe inspired iris. I'm super into Georgia O'Keeffe. She is basically the mother of American modernism. And really, honestly, in my girl heart, kind of like Wonder Woman. A little bit. If you put her in, you know, Santa Fe and made her completely awesome. Like, I would totally, like, if I played fantasy football, but I played fantasy artist, I would have her and Beatrice Woods hanging out, like, all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> doing things. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He's going to be tracking me with cameras so you can see everybody, the action. And we're really going to talk about how I created this piece. Um, I had to make some changes in this piece. And how you might not only paint today's painting, but go on and go into your own garden and create your own O'Keeffe's in your own life. I don't know. Seems like an exciting idea to me. Yes. So I'm really into today's colors. It's a simple color palette, but it's super vibrant. I love the lines and fluidity of this piece. What I will definitely say is I just wish it was like 48 inches by 60 inches large. Just massive, just monolithic, just <laughs> everywhere. But we've discovered that when we put canvases that large on the easel, we can't get it all on camera and it's a whole great event. Hard so we're to gonna, see. We're going to do 11 by 14 today, which is smaller. So I have my 11 by 14 canvas and I have a couple wishes going on there. And I definitely want to say hi to everybody who came out. I know I saw Gail and Cindy and Aaron and Little One and Hossie and Penny and Kimmy and Gwyneth and Ian and Tina and Nicole. Oh, yeah. All having an early chat. I don't know if you know this. This is live. People come early. They get in the chat. They're chatting today. They were all chatting about oils versus acrylics. Mm -hmm. The controversy. Wish there really isn't one. But, you know, it's still fun to talk about. We, How you we, doing, to, babe? Good. We need to have something. We I'm need some drama in this art world. You no, know. we make our own drama. We're de I'm, Listen. Artists be dramatic people. <laughs> it's okay. It's how we are. We're passionate. We're extreme. We're big. We're out there. We come, we're shy. We're just, oh, I don't know, people. It's just like artists are people too, man. <laughs> Except we're allowed to go anywhere we want and think any crazy thing we like because we live in an imaginary world. <laughs> mm. Let's look at the paint colors today. Oh, okay. So today I ended up, I ended up doing quinacridone magenta. We're going to be going through a lot of white. Titanium white, phthalo green, cad yellow medium, phthalo blue, and a little dioxanine purple. I'm probably not going to need any blending medium. Mm -hmm. And today's going to be about like brushy long strokes and working wet into wet and just sort of flowing with the painting. I felt like this painting probably like chilled me out the most yeah. of everything this week. Now we had some wishes. So we had a wish for Midori. She's like really just wishing there was a cure for just general illness. And also she's wishing for some well-being for herself so she can see her grandbaby grow up and her daughter become the woman she knows she's going to be. There was a really fantastic wish for an end to all bullying, which I am for because bullying is lame. Yeah. It's a lame look. If you have free time, you should be doing something more productive than picking on somebody else. Just <laughs> I'm just saying, if you got time, that's the mother I am. Do you have time on your hands? <laughs> Peace for humanity. I like that. And we're all wishing Nikita good luck on her exams today. I know I used to wish for those. Good luck on my exams. I'm going to take my number four round, and I'm going to kind of sketch this in. Yes, there's a traceable. And no, I don't think you have to freehand this in to be an artist at all in any way. But I am going to show you how to put it in if you want to freehand it in. But if you want to just use the traceable, that is cool too. I'm going to come here pretty dead center to the canvas. And I'm going to make this very elongated, droopy, meandery. See how my lines are meandery? Yeah, meandering. Kind of little triangle bit. Right? And then I'm going to come to the left-hand side of it and make a nice curve up like a little mountain. And I'm going to sweep down off the canvas. Mm. When you paint these, when you're trying to make these yourself, right, what you can do is you can go right into your garden and get a macro image that's a very up-close image of a botanical, like a flower, and then switch it to a black and white photo, mm -hmm. and then all you do is pick your color palette and paint your values. That's how I created this. Oh. Now, when O'Keefe did it, man, she had to go out and take her picture, and she'd develop it, make it black and white, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she was a straight-up artist. Because she, you know, didn't, like, just 
have easy access to all this information. Once she created this movement, let me tell you, there is a bunch. I'm going to round this a little more just for the line. I'm going to swoop this down. And let's give this a nice little petal that comes and swoops up. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. So, you know, she looked at what can we see differently now. She took this to a slightly more grown-up topic matter than we're doing today. Today we're more decorative. Mm -hmm. Right, but she really talked about issues of feminism and humanity and the world around her when she painted. So I'm going to make this little kind of circle that curves in. I'm going to make a space that comes up though, very specifically, because I want a dark value there. I looked at a lot of iris photographs that I could license, and it was hard to find one that really worked the way I was hoping it would really work. You know, and then there's just some swooping this way, right? And you can come down and swoop again. There's never too much swoop, right? So now we have that and we kind of know what's there. So this is an interesting shape, isn't it? With these little curls. Mm -hmm. That's fun stuff. Curl your brush around again in a mirror to this one. Mm -hmm. But we're going to change it up over here because plants don't play by the rules. Notice I just like curve my brush up. That's going to be indicative through this whole piece. That's sort of curving my brush up and playing with the brush stroke. And I swoop this down off to the left. See, so it just comes down here, swoops up, swoops down and off to the left. But again, okay to just put this on a 9x12 and use a traceable. That isn't breaking the rules. Because art has no rules. Mm -hmm. Which is why Miss O'Keefe was allowed to do this. <laughs> Now today we're just painting a flower for flower's sake. We're not we're not being representative in our imagery. No, we're not doing the full O'Keefe. And it was actually really hard to find um, some references that didn't, because <laughs> flowers tend to mimic certain things. And that was the whole point of it was right. to have that topic. It was to talk about those things from a very strong perspective, and and have us evaluate our world and and. Wow, it was very cool. But this is YouTube, and so we didn't. <laughs> right, but we you can you, you can, could you can you explore in your that own personal life could. Yeah, this is but this is you. You can introduce you to this artist and this topic in a yes. family friendly kind of way. And well, I, and and you know, a lot of people did. A lot of people went forward, and they just you know work with the flowers. And yeah. then you take this big. This is a beautiful image, right? This is a beautiful image. And. You know, the, the, it's really amazing. There we go. That's all. We're just going to sweep those lines off. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So that is the basis for what we're going to be painting in. I'm super relaxed about this. I'm going to rinse this brush out really well. Yeah. And take this over to the side. And I think I'll get, let's get a big chunky, chunky, chunkity brush. Mm -hmm. So this is a number 12 round. You could get a big 10. You could get a cat's tongue. But I just want a nice big brush. I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow and a little of my quinacridone, much more to the quinacridone. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to just sweep a brush stroke down. See how we're doing? Pressing down nice and, and smoothly. Just flowing that down. Kind of putting that in all loose, loosey goosey. All right, just use a big brush that gives you control in the space. That's all you're looking for is a little control in your space. It's okay to be controlling in your painting. It's all right. Everybody understands. I'm gonna come along the side. See how even with this big brush, I can come along this shape. Mm -hmm. That's because this brush is really well put together. Amber is very impressed at how all of your flowery, flowery ma accessories match. Your hat yeah, I had and a your whole, I had a whole moment here today. It, she, she's noticed and thought that you are, you're very on point with your collection. Of so on point, right? So, uh, thank you, Amber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to then see this brush is sort of dirty. It's a dirty brush, so I'm going to load it up with white. Right. Just white. And I'm going to blend these two fields together in big, sweepy motions. Now, one interesting thing that I can do, because the lip of my easel is a problem, mm -hmm. I flip it. I flip the script. 
You did. I did. I'm going to curve my brush strokes. And notice how my brush strokes are long. Mm -hmm. Whether you're using a number 10 braid, whether you're using a round brush, whatever brush you're using, on this stroke, we're going to press down a little harder than we normally do. We'll taper at the end where these two meet together. Right? Mm -hmm. And our brush strokes are long because they create the flow of the painting. See? I do. And so that would be the trick to this. Now, in a watercolor, sometimes that's a little easier because, you know, you prime the page and you paint with the water. But if you're doing an oil or acrylic, that's something you've got to really, really purposefully try to create. Now, around here, I'm being super careful. But notice, it's even with my big brush, not a big deal. And come here and swoop it. You may want to come across swooping, 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 swooping. S now I can when I flip it back over, I can make lots of adjustments to this, but it's about these first strokes getting in and getting long. Long strokes have value in abstract painting. Did you know that? Um, it, 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 now is it because the long strokes help imply imply word. structure and line? Yeah. I just put a bit of quinacridone on my brush. And I will pull that up while this is still wet. See that? Mm -hmm. A little more quinacridone here. What's the other word that I was thinking of? And then come across and then pull up. Long, flowy, flowy. Now let's check our work. Oh, that's nice. Mmm, that is nice. So if you're brush is super loaded with pigments, a good time to rinse that out. I will be changing water often. Yes. Just saying. Now let's put a similar thing kind of happening up here. I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green to my cad yellow. I'm going to make a very bright green. And I'm going to come along this outer edge here, right, and just paint a swoop of this color. I like it. Mm -hmm. Every one of these will look just a smidge different every time you do it. It's an interesting sort of experience. And I actually like the quinacridone um, outlining, how it layers in here. It's one of the things that I like. I'm going to wipe off my brush just a smidge a to get smidge. a little of the green pigment off. Stephanie would definitely like to see you do this on a big, big canvas, too. Oh, so fun. She's like, yes, big canvas. Yeah, That'd these be awesome. are just made for big canvases, aren't they? And you do some my big film studio is not made for big canvases, so I'm working. Now I'm on the tip of my brush, look. And I'm just adding a, a smidge of this sort of yellow here and maybe a little bit there. Get some more white on because you don't want the color to be too strong. Let's see how we're going. Leaving the green, adding the yellow a little bit. Fun stuff. You can rinse out. Because you can. Because we can. Because you can. Now you're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to take a little of my yellow and my green together. And right here, oh, well, which brush right here, I'm go. going to just wiggle it very loosely. A lot of this will get covered. But I like this is underneath. It starts to create my form and push my little brush. See, I'm pushing my little brush. Now, which brush is that you're using? I am indulging in the number 12 Ruby Sand <laughs> Silver Round. <laughs> I'm indulging. You could do my cat's tongue. You could do, if you had this number 6 black pearl, you could do this whole thing in the number 6 black pearl. Any, any, any you could any use round. It, the scruffly brush, huh? It just, you're just using a large round brush? Yeah, because it's allowing me to cover a lot of canvas. Mm-hmm. And I'm enjoying that experience. I got a slightly darker green here. And see, I'm coming on the tip. Yep. And I'm just pulling that up. So nice. Yeah. Super nice. Okay, I'm going to wipe off a little bit. 
And the reason is, I'm going to go get a bunch of white, and I'm going to get it from the side that has my um, yellow in it. And I'm going to start this right here. See how there's a hint of the green? I need a little oh, yeah. more. Just a, just a hint of it. I'm going to get a little more of it. There we go. I want this to be very bright, like the desert. Yeah. That's what I'm going for. Nice long strokes. <laughs> Just long strokes are the best strokes, or something. I'm going to come around this side, and Sam, I'm going to press the brush around. Yes. But notice that the brush is just giving me some interesting, because everything is loosely mixed, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's loosely mixed. I'm not doing thoroughly mixed paint. I'm doing loosely mixed. And look, I'm just loading it up on my brush, and I'm just coming over here and just talking about my form with brush stroke. This is a big thing in abstract painting, right? Mm-hmm. You got to talk about your form with your brush stroke. So that, like that little streaking, I, if I blended that all away, that takes from my painting. So I've got to find that moment of finding its structure and then releasing. Very calming, this process. You can do about a hundred of these and just be so pleased with yourself. I'm going to rinse this brush out a little bit. All right. And I'm going to come back and get a little of my yellow little smidge. See how it's just dusted on whatever brush I have? Don't get too caught up in the brushes you're painting with, as long as they're treating you well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to switch water. This is a painting I like to keep my water clean on. Mm -hmm. And now I don't want too much pigment on here, so if you need to, wipe off on a towel and come from the pink side and get a bunch of your white. You can get it into the pink there. See? And let's pull this down and see I'm just nice big pull strokes. It's okay that the yellow is picking up on my brush. All right? We don't mind that. This creates the abstract. Now, on our on a scale of 1 to 3, how difficult is this? This is a half a hoot. This this is this is just half. Now, if for some reason there's something about this concept that's frustrating to you and you find it more difficult than being super easy, don't think it's like you're not good at painting. It may there just may be something about loose mixing. Maybe mm -hmm. you're feeling very rigid and controlled in your life, so it's really hard to just let the paint be on your brush, right? And to trust your brush stroke and to flow with it. Or, you know, maybe it's the long brush stroke. So don't feel like just because something isn't as easy as it is for, you know, people on the whole that it's somehow a reflection of you. Because it is not. These are all I'm going to grab things. a little more pink on my brush. Huh? So these are all things that require practice. Yeah, and sometimes a new technique, even if it's maybe a you know an entry technique, right, could still be from a perspective challenging. I I say this as a non-painter all the time. I see. I mean, like I'm at the, I'm asked to like, hey, what do you think about this brush? And I'm like, I have no idea. So see how this <laughs> is a lighter pink, and we're letting the white tell the story. Yeah. And I told you this is a this is a get into your white painting a little bit. And we'll switch down to a smaller brush in a second. We're just wanting to I'm trying to even erase where I'm having to make these covering strokes because I want as many long strokes as I can have. Mm -hmm. And I might even come on here, get a little right, come into this. And make sure you're oh. just stroking. Yeah. There we go. You know, keeping that sort of fluid. Right? Another direction you can turn your painting, I'm going to be over here, babe, All right. is to the side. If some of it is giving you a hard time, Eileen thinks that this painting is so pretty, she says she can almost smell it. It is just a beautiful painting to look at, and it's a lot of fun to paint. So see how I changed the positioning of my canvas to improve the length of my strokes? Mm -hmm. And I, if I've over-blended, I'll come back with some white. Mm -hmm. 
because I do want that value. I want those things. This is yeah. one of those ones where I would highly suggest you get a stack of canvas boards, practice like a, a couple times, and then do it big. Yes, I would totally agree with John on that. I'm going to add a little. So see, I took a little of my yellow to my quinacridone, and I'm going to just add a little of this warmth right here. Look at that. And I'm going to mm -hmm. flow that stroke up. Oh, that's so pretty. It's even better than the original. Flow that stroke up. As I'm coming to the outside, go ahead and pink it up. Oh, that's so pretty. It's going to be so nice against the turquoise. Now I have to edge here. And where I have to edge, that's what that's I don't want those lines because every line in an abstract kind of counts. You make so few of them, every one you have conveys something. All right, there we go. How's that? I'll have to step back and look. What you get? So I've taken the white and see how I'm just making sure my flow isn't lost in the fold of that petal. Oh, that's so pretty. Rinsey, rinsey, rinse. Rinsey, rinsey, rinse. Now we get to have the fun of coming back with some pink. So get your pink, get a little of yellow into your pink, but you definitely still want it more pink and yellow. A little white, just a bit. And we're going to come off the top and pull that back down into it. See? Look at that. Yeah. Beautiful, yes? Yes. Beautiful. Just let it be beautiful. Just have fun. Let's come from here and play with that flow. See how I'm just, see how I'm like following the S of the curve of the structure of everything? Yeah. Let's see how that's looking. Oh, that's so pretty. I like it. Switching to a smaller brush and spilling. All right, how are we feeling? Really, really good. This is looking fantastic. Everyone is really enjoying this and thinking that this is going to look so good, big. It is. It's, you know. Just be flowy. Just be relaxed. Angel's like, I've got a 10 by 20. That's what <laughs> she's, she's like, I got that right now. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No one's checking your work, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> so and it, you can resize. You can change it up. You can change the colors up. There are no rules for this. It is your wings. Go fly. Go fly into your art. Just, you know, I love these colors. They're, they're a jam for me. But if you're like, man, I really need some different colors, that is okay, too. Yeah. Right? Nothing wrong there. All right, let's get some pop into this thing. Okay. So I, I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I have a number eight of my cat's tongue here. You could get your filbert. You could get a round. You could get a bright. They're all fine. I'm going to make... What I often refer to, and it's mixed by me, but you can buy Thalo Turquoise. And uh, Southern Ocean Blue is also Thalo Turquoise. So this is Thalo Green, and this is Thalo Blue, and you mix them one to one, you get Thalo Turquoise. And one of the things that I really thought about on this piece, actually, I don't know why I'm moving it to the edge. I should just move it to the side, shouldn't I? I don't know. What are you yes, going to do? <laughs> I'm going to paint this in a very dark value. Okay. So I'm going to come here ah. very carefully, right? And this one I'll have to think about these brush strokes a little more, right? Because it's a small confined space. I'm going to bring this little blue up. And between this green and the pink, I'm going to press out a darker value. See that? Mm. Look at that. Ooh, there we go. It's this little sort of slip stream that we've got going. I think coming the on the edge between these two. So see how I thickened it right there? The foliage of your hat was a uh, Oh. So what I did was I thickened it. this dark shadow. So this implies that there's this very bright sunlight or something happening, which actually there was. Mhm. Mm and, and that's one of the reasons that this looks more southwest or more desert-oriented. 
is the strong sense of light and shadow. Ah, that's true. You do get a strong here. sense of light and shadow in the desert. You do. It does that. It gives you that. So I'm just painting this nice. I'm gonna, this is a little bit smoother. All right. So there's that there. Now I've also got a little bit of a dark value here. Which I may come reinforce with purple, but first I put it in with blue. Because see how when the aqua goes over the quinacridone, it makes that beautiful purple? Yes. That's why we can outline in pink. Oh. Because the outline actually plays into our hands instead of against us. So again, notice how I'm thinking about the flow of my lines. Mm -hmm. And I'm brush stroking it out in the directionality. You can see I'm just stroking gently. Now I'm going to, while I still have my dark color. If you give me just a moment, I'm going to do something. make a quick adjustment to RoboCam there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. I'll have a sippy sippy. You have a sippy sippy? When these dark values come in, this whole piece just starts to pop. This is just one of those ones like, I really hope that I won't just see you do the iris today. I hope you're going to go into your gardens. You're going to take pictures of flowers close up. You're going to go on Pixabay, maybe find pictures of flowers close up, go and paint my photo. Go and, you know, and look at those and then say, oh, what colors do I like? And start painting those. I know I'm working on a black, white, and red one right now. That it might go a different color set. I'm still playing with it. So don't get too, like, hard on that because it's still in early stages. <laughs> those of you that followed me on Twitter saw me do a redesign on this in a hurry last minute. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, I hate it. I have to redesign it. I don't like it. And then I was like, what about it do I like? And then I redesigned it. Okay, Never I, be afraid to repaint. I think I got it. Okay. Okay. Oh, so I'm going to dip my brush in some water. I'm going to reload and remix my thalo turquoise, which is the thalo green and the thalo blue. One of my very favorite colors in the universe. Okay. I'm going to write this up right. Now let John get a second to come catch up with me. <laughs> no, no. I mean. <laughs> okay. He's over. <laughs> okay. So we're going to come here and just follow this. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Follow that stroke. That's a beautiful stroke. I like that. Strong. Going to stroke like this. See, I'm just pulling that in. Mm -hmm. And it's letting me follow the plants. These things all matter. And then I definitely want a little darker value right here. And we can put one right here, can't we? Yeah. Let's pop that in. And we might come back and purple it up. But right now, we've got that. So once that's in, come into your white and I come into it from my yellow green side because I don't want it to go to the purple and oh, up here babe sorry we're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I just forgot to tell you where I was going <laughs> I need a two-speed trolley <laughs> okay okay I'm very carefully just, and notice everything is loosely mixed. Look at my brush, loosely mixed. Pulling that out. Let's pull this out very carefully around here because we know what we've got going on and we can work these two together. See? Mm hmm. Everything informs everything else. And what I'm trying to keep is some value sense. Now, I may need to offload my brush like I am now or wipe it out and get some more white. I think I want some more white because I want the value to be lightning as I'm transitioning. 
See? Mm hmm I want my value to lighten. So I'm adding more white as I'm coming down here, letting this whole space become lighter. And it's okay if I paint over a little bit of my little flips here because I've got to come back and put them in. Mm -hmm. So don't feel bad if you take them out a little bit. You know where they are now. I'm going to, so I've got this white here. I'm just going to just make sure that I've got a nice, so see how I'm paying attention to sort of how it all flows together? Yeah. Wipe that off and get some of my dark turquoise. And I can either leave the strokes or soften the space. If I soften the space, it's like I'm saying abstract bokeh is occurring. Yeah, is there a lot of water on your brush? No. Okay. I am really working the paint out. All right. See that? Yeah. So all those choices are super valid. Let's come to this side and work some of that. Okay. I'm going to grab just white on my brush, and I'm doing it from the yellow and green side, not the pink and white side. Because I'm not trying to make a purple. There we go. We're brushing this in. Because I know I can put those flower flips back, can't I? Mm-hmm. Stroke around here, because I know I want that directionality. And I kind of like swirl. So either you make this smooth or you pay attention to your brush strokes. Those are the choices. That's all you get. <laughs> you know, I'm going to come right here. I'm just going to just say I'm just thinking this out a little bit. So in this space, what I'm really wanting is some dark value and some light value. I want to know that I have both of those. So... I'm going to rinse my brush out really well. Now, Tiger Lily was asking, she's like, so is Hi, there... Tiger Lily. She's, is there a glaze on your brush? No. Uh, okay, because she says, it seems so fluid. Is that... That's that loosely mixed thing. Okay. So I have very buttery paint. Uh, the reason I like paints like uh, Liquitex and Golden and Matisse and Holbein and Chervant, all the really pro paints, is they're buttery. Or that's how they should come out of the tube, like butter. Say it like your Barbra Streisand, like butter. Mm -hmm. So if it's coming out of the tube like butter, when you loosely mix and load, when you flow it out, it should glide over your canvas as just so easily. Yes. And it should mix there, and it should leave incredible structure in your stroke. Gotcha. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So now I'm going to take a little of my yellow. I want to avoid this orange here because I don't want that to sneak in on me, and I'm gonna, I can have a little green in it. And I'm going to come and add a little of this. I'm going to start creating the texture. That's this. You can get some white on there. It's okay if the blue's on it. <laughs> so what you're deciding is when you, if the blue gets on it, then you know you're still at least enforcing the green. But if the red were to get on it, you're enforcing the purple. And I'll still think about that in a second. Now I'm going to start doing a thing where I go once in dirty water. Dirty, dirty, dirty water. Dirty. And then I'm going to go once in clean. Hmm. <laughs> it's just a trick. Creature. Works really well if you don't have access to a lot of water. Yes. So I'm pulling a little of my white paint out. I'm going to get a smidge of my pink on there. Smidge. Notice how it's loosely mixed. I have not done a thorough mix on this whole canvas. This is very loose. This is very painterly. Oop. This is very, yeah, I'm going to be all over here. Okay. Go over there. I think I want to. Very painterly. Very painterly. I like that. I like painterly. So get a little more white on there. And just take this down. All the way down. If I need to improve flow, I can dip in water and come pull this out. I don't even, but I don't want to thoroughly mix it, so I'm avoiding that, right? Gotcha. So, even in there, you're adding, you're allowing a little bit of the water to. Yeah, I just definitely, definitely don't want it not to be streaky. Now I'm going to flick this down here because I like that shape. You can get a little more pink on there. If you think you need it, you can get a little more yellow on there. 
because the warm color against the turquoise pops. Boop. No green. So mostly swoopy strokes. Mostly swoop. So see, I plant and swoop. You're very this expressive. is the challenge, is just, just being like, I swoop it. You are, you're ha almost gets in the swoopy way there every time. Oh, there you go. I may have to bump the camera over one more. And I might let this kind of dry and resolve a bit. Would you mind if I bump the camera over one more? Yeah, Let's I'm going to just add a little white stroke between these two spaces. Between the pink and the green. That looks so nice. I might put the green back in a second. I just need to have that think itself out. It needs to sit and time out for a second oh. and think. Did you? <laughs> On the blue side with my yellow and a little green. Here I come. Here we go. I'm going to just add a bit of this pop of this, this green right here because I don't mm -hmm. want to lose that. But again, I'm not taking away the stroke, am I? No. This will need to be made more interesting in a minute. It got too uniform. So I'll show you how to fix that. Mm. Let's bubble it up and have a sip. Did you? We awesome. You we are. abstracting. Abstracting is hard, man. We have over 300 people here with us today doing this, so which is fa pretty fantastic. Now, I know I'm going to I'm, so cool. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm real sorry. I, I, you know, I, I keep trying to get the camera adjusted over there. I'm going to go fix it real quick. It's so, hard to get the color on this piece. I paint in colors oh. our camera and our lights have trouble with. Actually, we're doing pretty good on color today. Are we? Uh, what it is is that I just keep I, I keep getting the camera in the wrong place. So I'm going to fix that. So, but thank you guys. This and everyone's really enjoyed the this this whole painting. The, how loose it's been, how flowy it's been, how easy it's just kind of come together. Yeah, it's just seriously, you could do twenty of these. <laughs> just like flow, flow, flow. I'm doing more. I hope you'll do more. I'm doing one based on a black iris. I just haven't totally decided on my colors yet. What? I'm goofy. <laughs> Have you met me? I'm totally goofy. It's okay. But I also that? teach art you for free on YouTube. So for free. People forgive my goof. They do. They, they do. do. They forgave but it before. I don't really, you know. No. They forgave my goof before. While we're letting this rest, one of the things is if you have something go weird in your paint, sometimes you have to let it dry to fix it. Sometimes you want to work it wet into wet. But where it's like this, I want to just let it dry and have its little moment. It needs to sit in a corner and think about what it's done. <laughs> I'm going to put out some more. <laughs> I'm going to put out some more white paint. Bad paint. You just need to sit in a corner. And just let that, let's, and dry for a minute. So I'm going to take a little of my thalo turquoise, mm -hmm. just on the tip of my brush, and some of my yellow, because I want it to be quite bright, and my white. See? Yep. Loosely mixed. Loosely. <laughs> Loosely mixed looks like these. I'm going to come here. I've got this on the tip. This is still the cat's tongue, but you could use another brush. Just use the brushes that make you happy, that get you the strokes that you like. I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best brush? The one you use. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one. And I'm really enjoying this right now because it's doing what I, all I want out of my brush is for them to do exactly what they tell them to do when I tell them to do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm not controlling or anything. I'm all fine. I'm going to make another little swirl. Oh, love that. You find this in the a lot in camera guys, or especially See, loosely mixed telescope people. We're really bad about it. We're like we get involved in the tech and we have to have all the different ones and the different things and the collections and the lenses. But you know what? The, the camera that I carry around and take pictures with is the best one. Mm -hmm. The one, the brush that you pick up and paint with is the best one. Yeah, I don't want any less for you than I want for myself, which is to have a bunch of brushes that you just love using. Mm -hmm. I'm using a bunch of brushes that I just love using. Yes. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a special kind Dude, of... Dude, I'm just thinking, I remember when I was doing all those crazy abstracts, I'm just wishing I had this in school. <laughs> I'm just telling you, quite honestly, I'm wishing I was. I'm going to wince out and wince out, wince out in subduity water. 
and then I'm going to add um, a little pink swoop up here. I guess I need a little more yellow down. So I'm going to get yellow and white. And then I'll come back with the pink. Okay, see how I'm swooping this back up with the yellow and white? Yeah. I'm going to go get some pink right on the brush. Right there. Right, right on it. Dre you, you're putting paint on the brush? Directly I'm going on to it. Just. I can't, oh, look at that. I can't believe you. Just did that, because you know what? What's it going to do? Stand up for itself? No, take my paint. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood today. So I've done another one of these mixes. I've just added some more pink to this. And I'm going to come up here, John. Way up there. Yep. You ready? Nope. Let me know when you are. Okay. Scroll, 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 scroll. Let it out. Take a deep breath. Let it out. Breathe. See? I press down and then see how I lighten it? And it creates this. So this line where your lines are thicker and thinner, that really creates a lot of amazingness in your paintings. Never be afraid of participating in those things. I'm going to step down my brushes now. I'm going to get a little smaller, a little micro, but not much actually. I'm just going to grab the number four cat's tongue. <laughs> you guys are probably groaning at this point going, why? Because I really like it. That's all that's happening. No, Mike, all right. Huh? Mike, Michael Lee. Michael was, Lee. Michael Sorry. Lee. She was, <laughs> she was saying. Because I'm thinking Michael Lee might be Michelle, but okay. I think yesterday, I think, or the day before, she gave me okay. uh, pronunciation, which I think it was Micah Lee, if I remember correctly. <laughs> but I'm sure I'll be corrected in about 30 seconds when the scroll catches up. So anyway, she was saying, uh, I have trouble uh, with the large brushes. Uh, you must have a very light touch, Cinnamon. Is that is that what it is? Uh, yes. So for new painters, uh, one of the things that they do that really messes with them is they put too much kinetic energy in through their shoulder, in through their arm, into their hand. Mm -hmm. So most of my brush strokes just touch this tip. See, there's not bend. New painters often bend as much as this. Mm. And so you're really engaging the brush at that point. And if you engage the brush, it widens out the stroke. The trick to great cascara, to great everything is being able to lighten up, right? Being able to lighten off that pencil, being able to lighten off that brush, you know, if you're trying to get great thick and thin lines. So what's great is to take your brushes, all your brushes, and practice. I should make a video on this. Sure, yeah. To practice brush strokes, how to do that. So you learn each instrument and how you're like, when you widen it and lighten it up, and that's, 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 um, what is it in music when people hit the notes harder and lighter? Uh, I, I'm well, you guys know. Internet, tell us. Okay. So anyways... I'm going to get my brush wet. <laughs> I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone over to my dock's purple. And I want it to be definitely more to the red than the violet, right? So it really fits in this space. Like, like you do. Like you do. Like you do. And I'm going to do my first run of this. I'm going to come into this petal and curve around. See how we did that? I do. So small brush, your small detail rounds, whatever's going to give you nice lining. Okay? I'm just getting a really good turn here. You should talk about all this in the cat's tongue brush video. Yes. That's what? a good place to put it. Oh, no, just in general, I think I need to do a, like, how to know your brushes better. Oh, video. that's true, yeah. We should do that, too. How to, how to just, you know. I mean, because, like, if somebody just gave me, like, whatever brush, that's what I would do. Is I would get to know it. Mm. Get to know your brushes. The, the sleep vampire says, yes, I would like a video explaining that. Oh, I'd like a video explaining that. So notice how I went over my blue and I, oh. the, the depth and everything. Because we're essentially using glazes, and I love this painting because it's made for beginner paint. Dynamics. Right? We're actually leaning into... What makes your paint interesting? So I'm going to do this one, and then I'm going to do this one. Katie said the word you were looking for is dynamics. She's a violinist. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, dynamics. Thank you, Katie. See, yeah. it's, it's, we're so on we have that one. same thing in art. Just pulling that out. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, let's do the same thing. I like to think of these as the buns. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they look like to me was buns. <laughs> 
get my flower buns in order. <laughs> my flowers bum bum. Okay, so all of this is about attracting some bee to come there and do a thing. So this is like really interesting to a bee. But we don't have that wasp in today, so that's good. That was no good. All right, so I've got that nice dark value there, right? Right, 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 right. Right. Let's come around here a little bit. Do, 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 do. Dip in water. Mm. Now, I'm more thoroughly mixed on this than anything else I've done the whole painting. Because I was trying to get an exact kind of value and range. Now you can come here and flick. Right? And then off there. So see how that has a nice value? Yeah. All right, here we go. Under here, and I'll be messing with this for a minute. No, this much is true. Do, 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 do. So, that's looking pretty darn good. Mm. I'm pretty happy with that. Rinsey, rinsey, rinse, 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 rinse. Rinsey, rinsey, rinse, rinse, rinse. You just don't want any pigment in your brush. Yeah. Which So you want to thoroughly rinse between these things. Now, I'm going to let a little of the purple get on here, but it's going to be much more magenta. You can even add a little white to it so you can see it. I'm going to come right here, right up to this. I'm painting all the center of this much darker value, aren't I? Yes. Isn't that pretty? It is. So pretty. So pretty, 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 pretty. I'm going to wipe off my brush. Wipe it off, not rinse it out, interestingly enough. I'm going to pull out a little more of my magenta and get some of my white on here. Loosely mixed. Loosely. Loosely. Let's start that blend between these two spaces. All right? Rinse, rinse, rinse. Now, a little of my yellow into, I don't want any of my purple in this. Keep your purples away from your yellows. I'm going to get some white, lots of white. Look how much white. Oh, yeah. And I'll come here underneath and pull this down. And I'm going to want to lighten that up. That got a little too dark, but that's okay. I have a path to that. Let's get some more magenta on my brush, brush. All right. Come here. Okay. Because there's just got to be some paint on the canvas at some point for you to do like more refined stuff. I'm going to take a little of my, one of the things if you do a deep rinse, you may always need to towel your brush because water droplets can come down and suddenly drop off your tip all over your canvas. Super irritating. And get a little yellow. Get some white away from my other colors. And I'm going to come to the top of this. See that there? Yeah. You can even, while you have this, put some of this back here. There we go. I just wanted it. And so now this is all just starting to look incredibly structural and abstracted, right? We need to, for the next part, right? I'm going to rinse this out. For the next part, I'm going to dry this so I can get the next part because I don't want the colors I'm about to put mixed to the colors that are underneath. Hmm. 
I'm going to say thank you guys all for coming and joining us again today. It's been really cool to have all you guys out here talking about how you about all the different flowers you guys would like to do and seeing you guys out today. It's been uh, it's been really nice to have our community out. And I, we're looking forward, of course, to more Southwest this week. Uh, and we've got a couple more pieces coming up this week, and we've got uh, the 13 Days of Halloween coming up very soon. I guess in a, just, uh, another couple weeks from now. Um, is it 13 Days of Halloween? It's not too far from here now. I either. know. I've got so We're much stuff going corner. on. You guys are going to have to go by the Facebook group. Yep. Art Sherp Official. Join it and vote on stuff. Because I'm going to be like... This zombie, this zombie. She's so much better. This witch, this witch. This pumpkin, this pumpkin. You have so much work to do. Now, Otherwise, can, who knows what you'll paint? Can you guys get to guess which one of us <laughs> talk more? No pressure. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to get some just yellow on my brush. Right? I'm going to come back to this space. And I'm going to tap in, do you see? I'm going to just use up some of my nice yellow. To, to, to put some of this back. It's okay if you grab some white on there as you're going down. Isn't that uh, nice? Yeah, it really is. I, I always feel so bad when you go on break there to, to, to dry something and then, like, I do a bad job of talking. I'm like, I'm not oh, the talker. I, you're the talker. I appreciate you doing it, man. It's like, it's like, being a hostess and having to leave a room, it's so nice <laughs> to have you there. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just saying that you can guess which one of us talks more in the relationship. No. That is not true. That would be a lie, and you know it. Okay, <laughs> so I'm getting my green. So you ever meet those shy people that don't have a lot to say until you know them really well, and then there's no off button? My son and my husband are like that. <laughs> <laughs> Spider never says anything until he knows you well, and then once he knows you really well, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> so many thoughts on everything. <laughs> He's thinking. He's a thinker. All right, so I'm going to dab in some just green. Doop, doop. See? Yep. Everything's still wet, so it's sort of all blending together. Isn't that lovely? Yes. Down here. That's lovely. Rinsey, 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 rinsey. Rinse. Rinse, 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 rinse. I'm going to let this dry a bit because when I come put the purple there, I'm going to want it to um, not pick up the yellow. And while I've got this brush, I'm going to get a little of my pink, some of my yellow, none of my green. And let's just make sure that this was a, a little more considered out. Get some white on there. Just then when I, I did it, it was just too washed and not. See? Yeah. Now this looks like it's more like the painting, right? That little finish, you know, sometimes you got to go back and you're like, man, that doesn't look right. Let it dry. Go back and visit again. Now my next bit, I'm going to actually get my scruffly brush, my scruffle brush. And I'm going to get a little of this yellow pink color I have here and a lot of this white color. And I'm going to lighten this bit up a good bit. See how I'm pulling that down? And my scruffle brush is, it's like a Hufflepuff. <laughs> my scruffle brush, my Hufflepuff, number four Cambridge. This is the Luna Lovegood of brushes. Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> here, here, I'm just trying to lighten this value up just a smidge. Right? I'm coming back with this really cool turquoise that's going to pull this petal out from its background petal. I just need it to have some high values. You could even take a smidge of yellow and a bunch of white and just right here talk about that a little bit. See how I'm doing? I'm tricky. I'm tricky, 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 tricky. It's tricky to rock around. I'm not doing that. It's not happening. No. I grabbed a little more yellow on my brush. Now, how often should you And I'm going to just come here. How often should you be changing your 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 water when you're doing these purples and yellows here? Uh, often. Yeah. Often. I have several jars. 
mm-hmm. and I'm doing a three rinse method. <laughs> I'm not even, it's not even a joke up in here and stuff. It's like, oh my gosh. So if you're at home and you're doing this, you should definitely be looking at multiple, changing your paint, your, your, your uh, clean water often. Yes, you should be changing your water often and it would not hurt you if you're very new to painting because you guys can load your brushes more than you know mm-hmm. to go rinse them out in the sink on occasion. If your colors are not popping, mm-hmm. if it's not popping, if it's not hopping, something's dirty on your brush. Right. All right. So I'm just taking this just magenta and I'm coming back here and I'm improving. See what I'm doing here? Yeah. And then you can come here and just work these two together. Look, look, look. And so it's like it just wasn't even a whole different space. Ah, Perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. Because it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Rinse this out. Rinse it out, man. Rinse it out. Thalo turquoise. Do you remember how to make it? Yes. Thalo green and thalo blue. One to one. That's not really a a, a rhyme or anything. I don't know where I'm going with that thought. I'm going to come along this edge here. You can come right there. That pretty how it pops these two values. I really like it. I really do. So, right. so I'm gonna just feather this up a little bit. See, I'm feathering it up. No, uh, Katie was feather, asking. Feather, feather, here. feather, feather. Light touch. Yeah. Light touch, Katie. Yeah, she she was actually there. There was a she had a question about your brush sets. Actually, mm, she was happy saying to answer. The, the beginner set is for beginner. Like if you're just trying to start out and you want to just to grab a, a set to start out with, that's the one you would start with. Yeah, you know it's not it's not going to kill your pocketbook, and every one of those brushes is going to perform really really well. And you're not going to just be able to do whatever we're working on here, but you're going to be able to work on other people's stuff. You know, it, it they'll leave you well set up as an artist. Mm-hmm. Which is a big deal to me. And we'll try to we'll make sure that there's a link in the description below to the artsherpa.com forward slash brushes where you can find uh, information about all of those. And uh, Yeah, I, I did a, like how to use them and clean them and stuff. And so you can sort of look at that. So if you had them, I'm going to wipe off my brush here. And I'm going to get some just white. And I'm just going to make sure that we're, you know, well, see I'm going between these two? Mm-hmm. Thought out. Now, are you using thalo blue there? Thalo blue and thalo green. What shade thalo blue? Green shade. Green th- shade. Thalo, thalo blue, red shade is essentially ultramarine blue. It's not, but I mean, like, essentially, it will mix like it is, so that would mess y'all up. Interesting. <laughs> so, someone was just asking, he was like, which shade is it? And I was like, I do not know. I'm just trying to make sure that this transition, right, and I may have to come back in a second with something else, is just strong and also compositionally valid. Be compositionally valid in your transitions, man. What, what if you're adding a little white here. What if that's not your way? What if you're an invalid painter? Then, you know, man... Rock that sauce. Okay. <laughs> rock it. Rock it hard. I'm going to get a little pink. My brush is well rinsed out and a little white. And I'm just going to make sure that these this transition here is... See? I'm blending them back into each other. So even though stuff is dried, I'm still creating that flow. Right? between those two spaces. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that flow. Outside here. Because now I'm working. You're working it. Well, now I'm working. All right, let's look at it. Yes. It's happening. It's happening. Blend this here since it's too harsh. But I, I wanted a little bit, but that was too much of one. Mm. You want a little. 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 All right. Mm. Now I'm going to come in phthalo green again 
with a little bit of white. Look at that pop. And then we'll come back oh, with the purple yeah. in a second. In a second. Back with my... We're almost done, by the way. Are we? Yeah, we're about to sign. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, so, it's looking so good. <laughs> we're going to go came back into our, so fast. our docks purple. Yeah, it's just one of those paintings, man. It's just one of those styles. Very carefully, without picking up any of my yellow, I'm going to deepen this value here. Right? Make sure I'm happy with all my lines, all my stuff, right? If I need to come along here and smooth it out, I smooth it out. Because this is my abstract. And I need to pay attention to how my lines flow. So where it needs a touch up, touch up. I also really strongly feel that this needs the purple between the transition of the aqua. And see how that flows into it and it creates that curve if we back up, yes. And then the other really super important element of this painting to me is this line here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that one. It's true you can rock around it's right on time. It's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, a little window <laughs> into our world <laughs> as she snips into paint mode. <laughs> the, and this is why you got to keep her talking, because otherwise she'll start to sing. <laughs> well, and you know what? It was funny. I, I think it was it was either Gail or Sue. I'm not sure who it was. Said that this is the happiest painting. That it, Thank you, Patty. It was Patty. She says this is the happiest painting. And so it, just you little singing along up there. It is. It's a really happy painting. No joke. Yep. Now, oh, so pretty. You cannot do this wrong. Let's put our signature on it. Okay. Do you know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to flip it. You're going to make it difficult for me. Flip I scroll, it. I scrolled all the way down there, so I was in the right place. And then you were just like, nope, I'm going to mess with you. I'm going to go someplace else. I'm going to load up a little Thalo Turkish, but I'm going to be mostly white. Right? Because this is a slightly objective abstract, if you're doing a completely non-objective abstract, don't sign on the front, sign on the back. If you're doing a slightly objective abstract like this, which has a clear orientation, do sign. That's how that works. Well, there you go. If you're doing non-objective work and you sign it, and that's where this whole do I sign my work or not sign my work comes from. Mm. If you're wondering where did that start, it's because really intense abstract artists are like, uh, if I put my signature there, then people are completely stuck hung hanging it a particular way because they are kidnapped by the word. Ah, uh, it anchors the... It anchors the piece. So they start putting it on the back, and then people are like, well, if I'm really fantastic, people will know me by my stroke. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the rule on abstract painting. If it's slightly objective and you have an orientation, it's perfectly fine to sign. If it's very unobjective, it is not. Gotcha. If you ever wondered. I was, I was, did, was curious about that. And notice that I'm still picking something that does not throw off my whole composition. Right? It's there. there it you is. know who made it. But I didn't just tank the whole piece to sign it. That okay. worked out nice. Was that fun? I think we're going to do this again sometime soon. Different flower, different palette, but a similar thing. So if you guys love it, share it, tweet it, Instagram it, post it on Facebook, come by the website, upload it for free. <sighs> this was great. I love today. Yeah, me too. I love this time with you guys. It was just the best. I cannot wait to see your paintings. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And paint all the flowers really big and in your face. Mm -hmm. I'll see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>